giving me this. Thanks to me. I'm thanking him for what he's done for me. Giving thanks to me. I'm thanking him for all he's doing for me. I'm thanking him for waking me up. I'm, I'm thanking him for paying my bills. I'm thanking him. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm thanking him for protecting me. I'm thanking him. Y'all help me. Go on. You want to go and thank him? 25 seconds. Just thank him. Come on. That's it. God is good, y'all. I said God is good. If you're just joining us, God is good. If you're listening to us, you ought to testify right now. God is good. Hallelujah, somebody. When you think about all that he's brought you through, all he's still bringing you through, even the things that you didn't think you would get out of, God did it anyhow. You, you didn't think you had enough strength to get up this morning, but look at you. I might not be able to run around the building, but God, I got my legs I can stand on. Help me somebody in here. That's enough to thank him for. And that's what Thanksgiving is all about. Thanksgiving is you thanking him for making every rough place smooth. You're thanking him for making every crooked place. You're thanking him for bringing you out of every valley and every mountain. He's so worthy this morning. He's so worthy. Welcome St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Welcome to our friends who gathered and joining us by way of Zoom, by way of teleconference, amen, Facebook, amen, and YouTube, amen. We are grateful to God. Thank God for our wonderful musician, Minister Fogel, Mr. Kwan, amen, amen. See our missionary, amen, siblings in the house. See my lovely wife and family in the house. See Deaconess White in the house, another young lady in the back there, amen. My good friend, amen, Minister Tisha Dorothy. And of course, Sister Janisha, who's just doing such a wonderful job. She makes me look so good. I thank God for her, she's our technical person. To all of the members, amen, I greet you with Jesus' joy this morning. We had communion this morning. If you didn't have a chance to join us for communion this Sunday, we'll be having our drive through communion beginning again next Sunday from 9.30 until 11. Please, ma'am, please, sir, show forth your faith, amen. Drive by, we'll have the Lord's Supper for you, amen. Amen. For those, amen, that can't drive by, I'll stop by your house, amen. Because we still have to show forth our faith, amen, in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. There is a word from the Lord this morning in 1 Peter. 1 Peter the 4th, 3rd chapter. 1 Peter the 3rd chapter and 1 Peter the 4th chapter. If you have your swords with you, the word of God with you. 1 Peter the 3rd chapter. Beginning at verse number 13. And then the 4th chapter, Peter just flip right on over. Verse 16, 17, 18, and 19. I'll read until the Holy Ghost tells me to stop. Amen. It's good to be in the number one more time. Amen. amen. First Peter, the third chapter, beginning at verse number 4, 13, 14, 14. But even if you should suffer for righteous sake, you are blessed. Let me say that one more time. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Here's what he says, y'all. 15 verse, I believe. He says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks of you a reason for the hope that is in you. With meekness and with fear. Drop on down to 18 verse. For Christ also suffered once for sins. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive. Somebody say alive. alive. By the Spirit. Drop on over to the verse four, chapter number 14. Just flip right on chap chapter number 4. Drop on over to chapter number 4. Beginning, I believe, at verse number, hallelujah, verse number 16. Here it is, y'all. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. I'm, I'm going to try to hold myself. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. 
And if it begins with us first, what will the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Last verse, verse number 19, you can read the rest of it. It says, therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good. Somebody said doing good. As to the faithful creator. You can take your seats in the presence of our God. I'd like to use for thought this morning the point of suffering. The point of suffering. Somebody texted me this week. Somebody called me this week and said, Pastor Goodwin, why do good people suffer? Anybody ever ask you that lately? Amen. They said, why do good people suffer? And fear has tripped and gripped you. But I stopped by to tell you there's a word about suffering this morning. Oh wait, there is a pray with me for a little while, y'all. Just pray with me for a little while. Peter in the early church had experienced right now the same kind of suffering. Uh-huh. They, 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 were, they were doing good, but there were some evil people. Yes. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. In other words, you gotta understand when you call yourself a child of God, Jesus reminded us in Matthew, I believe Matthew 5 and 10. He said, Blessed are you when they persecute you. Come on, help me in here. He said, For yours is the kingdom. In other words, they'll talk about you, yeah. they'll persecute you, but don't worry, man. blessed are you, for yours is the kingdom of God. In other words, you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, the evil is always around us. Focus is on God, I guess I had. And when you focus on God, Psalm 34 says, you will lack nothing good. Go on and hide somebody in the spirit and say, you will lack nothing good. This, the point of suffering. Now, then, then Peter reminds us that suffering gonna bring some glory. Amen. None of y'all don't want to go through nothing. As a matter of fact, y'all don't even want to be going through COVID right now. But can I tell you that God are you suffering to bring some glory? Y'all help me preach this. In other words, and listen, and ain't nobody exempt from suffering. Come here, Job. Come here, Job. Man had all kind of possessions, but the Bible said he feared God. God help me, Holy Ghost. In other words, suffering for the Christian is normal and not the exception. Y'all need to write that down wherever you are. The next time you're going through something, remember suffering is normal and not the exception. In other words, the psalmist said, no cross. Hey, help me out here, y'all. Help me out here now. No cross. No crown. You got to suffer some things. And Peter said, listen here. Paul reminds us the suffering is only temporary. Paul said, for my life of fish, I got to get out of here. I'll bite for a moment. He said, but he, but it's far it seems the glory I'm getting ready to come through. I might be going through now, but the glory is coming after a while. Oh, there'll be some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Suffering for Christ brings glory. Listen, when the Spirit, listen to me, is resting on you. The Spirit, look at you. The Spirit rests on you. In other words, when God is on you, he's going to lift you to another level. But let me go back to suffering for a minute. Suffering. Suffering, now, sometimes we cause our own suffering. Sometimes our own misconduct. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Young people, sometimes, and see, that, that's why you got to count on the Spirit to lead you. Because sometimes you suffer from something because of something you don't know. I wish I had somebody helping me. But suffering, let me give you a definition of suffering and I got to get out of your way. Suffering means this, yo. It means to hold up from underneath something. It means to sustain. To, in other words, it, it means you're going to endure what's holding you down. God help me. Can I just say, when you suffer, it, it means that I might be going through a storm, but I'm God going to hold I might bend, but I ain't gonna break. I wish I had the Holy Ghost helping me. I might be going through a storm, 
but I'm gonna bear this stone. My father might have looked out on me, but I'm gonna bear this stone. My children might not be speaking to me, but I'm gonna bear this stone. The next time you go and through, just remember, y'all, to bear it. I'm bearing. High five somebody in the spirit and say, I'm gonna bear it. In other words, suffering now, listen to this. Another thing about suffering. Suffering, just because you're suffering, don't mean that that's the end result. What do you mean, preacher? You remember them Israelites? Pharaoh told them to make some bricks and stuff. Huh? And he made it harder. Or he thought he was making it harder. Sometimes, it's God's intentions to bring about something good for you. Sometimes, God's intentions is not to persecute you, but to get you to something else. Y'all ain't helping me. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. What I'm trying to say is, maybe you're going through right now so God can get you to the other side. Maybe you're having problems right now, but God said, I'm going to get you to the other side. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. So Peter said, now back to this to dwelling. Peter said, you got to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it represents God's presence. Oh God. In other words, when God's spirit is controlling your life, it means that God is working it for my good. Uh, but just keep doing the right thing. It, it, it might have called you everything, but a child of God. Some, for now, sometimes you gotta bite your tongue. But the Holy Spirit empowers us because I'm doing the will of God. If you're suffering for the right thing, or if you're suffering for speaking to people, if you're suffering for doing the right thing by protesting in a good way, don't worry. I said, don't worry. Just don't be violent. But back in the day, they were non violent. Because when you suffer for doing the right thing, the Holy Ghost, I make the whole of your peace. I said, the Holy Ghost, it represents the presence of God. This same Peter, anybody Bible readers in here? This same Peter was locked down in shackles one day. He was in the prison cells. But the Holy Spirit rest on him. Good God Almighty. And the shackles came loose. And the doors came open. If you let the Holy Ghost lead you, whatever suffering, God will, I said God will, he'll show up, you just keep doing the right thing, young people, let you just keep doing the right thing, if you lost a loved one, just know God's spirit, I said his spirit, and to keep you loving, and to keep you doing right, y'all ain't helping me, look at this, look at this, I gotta go, look at this, look at this, suffering, Peter says, the testing and the judgment is coming. He said it's starting at the church house. What I'm trying to say, and I gotta move on, y'all. In other words, if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, if it's hard, brother, if I'm trying to come to church and do the right thing, he said, but how much more harder if the ungodly? <laughs> I tell y'all, you, you're gonna be judged one day. I thought about to tell somebody if you don't know the Lord this morning, you need to understand He gives a list of things. He said, Don't be a murderer, don't be a thief, don't be a busybody, always in somebody's business. I wish I had somebody helping me in here. Y'all gotta understand one of these days, we're gonna give an account for everything we sow. That shall be weep. But if you're suffering, if you're suffering, for righteous, just know God is going to get the glory. Brenda, just keep on doing good. Just keep on on the right path. See, when you're doing good, it means I'm on the right path. I remember, Brenda, one time you had a job, baby, working for the county. And Brenda told the boss man, we just got married, I believe. And she told the man, the man wanted her to sign her name or something. She said, no, I ain't signing my name or something I didn't do. He said, well, you're going to have to leave this job. She picked up her bags, walked out the door, and can I tell you, we never missed a bill. Y'all ain't helping me. When you do right, when you do right, because the race, I said to grab a race, you're not giving to the 
the spirit is not as strong. But if you hold out, people have some evil ways. People got some evil traps. But let us try. Peter said, let us, let us rejoice. Can I get about four people that don't mind rejoicing? Can I get about four people that don't mind praising God? The point of suffering, the point of suffering. I don't care who you are. You might go through some things. But I'll stop by to tell you. God will. I said he will. Take care of you. Finally, my brothers, Peter says, Peter says to us, suffering calls you to grow and mature. That's in the fifth chapter. When you get home, read it. He said, but may the God of all grace who calls us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He said, once you suffered for a while. Somebody said for a while. In other words, God said, when you suffer, I'm going to make you perfect. When you when you suffer, I'm going to strengthen you. When you suffer, I'm going to bear the burden for you. Peter says, I'm going to make you stable. I'm going to make you settled. Is there anybody in here that might have a burden? If you're going through, I stop by to tell you, testing might come, persecution might come, but keep on doing the right thing. I said, trials, they come to make you strong. Just feel God, just a devil the Holy Spirit to get well within you. It'll be alright. I said the point of suffering is to give God the glory. Can you stand on your feet with me? Even if you're at home, stand on your feet. He said, I might be suffering, but I'm still praising. I might be going through, but I'm still lift my hands. Because the glory, the glory, the glory is coming as a while. The point suffering. Jesus suffered when they put him on the cross. When they hung him there, y'all, from the ninth hour to the sixth hour. And they pierced him in his side. They, they put nails in That's suffering, y'all. But I told you earlier what suffering means. It means you're buried. He buried it. Even when they stuck him in his side, he buried it. See, I don't know why y'all sometimes you have to you have to check something and say, I got to bear this thing. My children ain't doing right, but I'm gonna bear this thing, Lord. I'm almost at my nose, but God, I got to bear this thing. Lord, you got to help. Because see, that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. And if you let the Holy Ghost in, you can bear anything. Jesus bear hug him on the cross. Put him in a tomb. But third thing. Stop trying to make excuses for not doing right. Peter said, do right even if they talk about you. Do right for now even if they, they should go on home. That's all right. And all he did was elevate you for now. That's all he did. And some of y'all need to understand, God got you in a position to put you to the next level. The suffering is not to teach you no lesson. To, uh, he wants to get you to the other side so you can give him glory. COVID-19, so we can get to the other side. George Floyd, so we can get America, listen to America, to get to the other side. Only with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The point of suffering. Don't let nobody tell you no more about child you're going through. Now I, can, I, now, I ain't going to make no excuses for you. Because Pope Peter said, now, you still ain't got no excuse for doing wrong. When you know you're right. When you know you should be doing right. I can't make excuses for doing wrong. Because wrong being done to me. Pastor, you don't know how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah your husband's going on the glory, but how do you think that lady home for you? All right. Come on. Come on. Peter said, listen, now I go to the word and read it for yourself. He said, if you're going to fear anybody, fear God. Still at the end, Peter said, do the right thing. I'm closing now, but I want you to hear me in the spirit, y'all. You know what's right and what's wrong. Do the right thing. You 
you, you know if they set trap for you, you listen, if they set trap for you, go on, listen, we can't hurt that we used to do. But if you know, this can way better for a distance and child, I'm doing good. Good to see you. Don't even worry about that. Glory to God. Read it for yourself. He said, even if they do you wrong, you do right. St. John, I love you. God bless you. A few announcements real quick. I want each of you to pray for each other. Keep Mother Frances Bills lifted up in your prayers. Mother Danny and others, Sister Brown, all those others, I can't call them. Brother, all the brothers and sisters of our church. Huh? Sister Wooden, I talked to her this morning. Keep them in prayer. To all of us who know the words of prayer, do the right thing. If you're visiting with us, do the right thing and pray for us. Amen. 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 Finally, I want to say again, next Sunday we'll have communion from the hour 9.30 to 11. Here at the same way, just drive up. We also want you to say Tuesday, don't forget to go to the primaries. There's a great race and there's some things going on. You know we had a great show here still working for Dorchester. We want you to support them if you can. We have some great guys that are running for the city seat in Richville. We want y'all to support who you like to support, amen. But we just want you to go out and vote, amen. amen. Make sure you exercise that vote. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Sean again, my brother. Are suffering. God doesn't want you to suffer to prove something you. God wants you to suffer to see if you can bear it. And God wants you to suffer because you know what? If you do right, he'll get you to the other side. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Come on, Sean.